Hey, what's going on Weavers? Tim here again. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. And in today's tutorial, we're learning how to make the Spinal Bane's Cuff Paracord Bracelet. So this is a modification of the original Bane's Cuff by D-Man McHugh. And um, this modification comes courtesy of Chunk Zerith Abrahams. I do apologize if I butchered your name a little bit. But uh, anyways, you can check out Chunk's Instagram link in the description box down below. So that is what we're doing today. And that being said, let's get into it. So for this bracelet, I do have my main weaving cord, three shorter strand cords, and that is the center spine cord. And of course, I've got my usual tools as well. First off, I'm going to take my longer cannibal color. I'm going to wrap it around my finger like so, making kind of like a cow's hitch around my finger. And this is how we're going to create our uh, core assembly. So I've got that cow's hitch like so, and I'm going to take the right side strand and pass it through the middle of that cow's hitch. So we'll just separate our two cords up top. The right side goes through the middle like so. Pull down all the way through. And then the left side goes through as well from the left to the right, like so. We've used this setup for several bracelets, and um, it's definitely one of the best ways for knot and loop cores for multi-strand bracelets. So I'm just going to firm that up a little bit. You don't have to get it um, you know, super tight and firmed up just yet. We're going to incorporate our core strands. So you want to leave a little bit of space in there, but have your top loop. Uh, about you know half an inch or so or three quarters of an inch and now I've got my three shorter strands I'm just gonna pass them through the bottom there okay so that's one and you want to get your strands nice and even on both sides and then I'm just gonna pass the other two through so that's the second one pass that right through and then get the third one on as well okay and once you've done that, you can firm up the core now, get it nice and tight, and keep the strands, the core strands, um, nice and even. I'm going to turn this around because I want this to be the front of the bracelet. Okay, and I've got my three core, or rather six core strands even. Next, I've got my core on my jig. Just got the loop up top there connected and one of the core strands around a, the nail on the bottom. And for the other four strands, I'm just going to tie... Uh, cobra knots around the middle strand here just to anchor them okay we're going to undo this later so you don't have to tie it too tight and the reason why i'm just doing that is just to keep them um, kind of spaced out because i need them kind of laying um, side by side and if you just kind of anchor it all around one nail it might kind of bunch up so this is what you're looking for here you can do this any way you want that's the way that i found worked best for me so i have my six strand core now and everything is laying nice and flat so now we can start weaving. I've got my main weaving color, which is the OD green. I'm going to lay that across the core strands like so. And now we're going to go to the red strands. I'm just going to call them red now instead of the cannibal color. Uh, and I'm going to cross the left over the right once. And then I'm going to twist them around a second time. Okay, this is going to form the center ridge. And I'm always going to cross left over right. Okay, so we've got left over right. We made our twist. And now I'm going to take the right strand, put it underneath the fourth core strand, like so. I'm going to loop it around on itself and pass it back underneath the uh, twist on the right side, like so. And then now with the strand on the left, I'm going to pass it underneath, underneath the third core strand. And then again, I'm going to loop it around on itself, like so. Okay, so we've made our twist, and now we're going to cinch these two uh, pieces up to the top. So pull up on those. And when you're doing this part, you'll have to take care to, you know, cinch it up nice and properly to form that twist. Because if you do this part unevenly, all the twists will be inconsistent. Now working with the OD green strand, I'm going to bring that underneath the two core strands on the far right. So into that gap from the back to the front, like so. And then from there, I'm just going to put on a fit to show you where I'm putting this cord in. I'm going to go above the green strand itself and through the same gap, but up top. Okay, so in between the fourth and fifth strands, like so. I'm going to pass that through from the front to the back. And I do realize you could have done this um, first, but I just opted to do the twist first. But 
for the rest of the knots we'll be doing the green first so cinch that up and these are one of the knots where you can't really pull on it too tightly otherwise it will deform so you have to find that right amount of tension so now back to the right side we're gonna go in from behind and underneath the two outer core strands on the left side so we're just doing the same thing but mirrored and then again I'm gonna go up back above the OD green strand and through the uh, second and third core strands like so and pull all that excess to the back and cinch up the knot okay so get that nice and cinched up like so and we have tied our first knot okay so now to continue this pattern uh, we're going to go back to the OD green or actually we're going to continue working with them I'm going to pass the right strand through the middle core strands from the right to the left and then take the left strand out through the middle from the sort of left to the right uh, coming from the back to the front like so and now we're going to tie that uh, knot like I said before so doing the same knot as before okay pass it through that gap there and cinch it up on the right side and then same thing on the other side underneath or around those two outer strands coming out through the front and through the back to finish it like so okay and there is our green knots and you're just going to cinch those up again as usual get them nice and even and again this bracelet will require a lot of finicking with it because um you know you need to get that tension just right and now we're going to do our twist okay so i'm doing again left over right do the double twist like so and then tie that same or anchor the knot the same way as you did before underneath that middle strand on the right okay wrap that around like so and then the left cord goes underneath the third core strand and loop around under itself and then cinch it up okay so as you can see that is our pattern you're just going to cinch up that spine knot and then you're going to go back to the green knots okay so it's just alternating between the green cord and the red cord and do take your time uh, like i said before to you know cinch everything up properly and try to maintain the a consistent amount of tension on the knots um, i think i did all right with this one you know um i did see a little bit of deformation where you know some knots were a little bit tighter and some were a bit looser but um yeah do your best to get those nice and even otherwise the bracelet will be a little wavy when you look at it so just continue these knots going down your bracelet doing the green knots and then the center spine knot alternating back and forth and make your way down your core and i'll show you guys how to finish it off from there so i've come down to the bottom now and i'm gonna do my twist one more time okay this is how we're gonna finish off that knot so i've done my double twist and with my right side strand i'm gonna go underneath the fourth core strand in the middle but this time i'm gonna go underneath from the left to the right and see that little gap i've created i'm gonna pass the working end through that little gap there like so okay because that will kind of anchor the knot on itself so we're gonna cinch that up a little bit and now same thing on the other side the left side strand goes underneath the third core strand and you loop it around like so and put it out through the back and now we have our uh, core strands ending up on the back where we want them so get that cinched up now i'm going to remove all those temporary cobra knots on the bottom of the jig and i'm going to undo that you know sloppy overhand knot as well because we can finish off the bracelet now now to i want to anchor my green strands so we're looking at the back of the bracelet now and if you look closely where the uh, red strands have stopped there's two loops on the back okay so i'm going to open up the sort of top loop on the right side and i'm going to pass the green strand through that loop from the top to the bottom okay i'm just going to pull that all the way through i didn't sort of open it up with my knotter's tool there and once you do open it up be sure to tug on those strands again to close them lock them down but you can do that after you anchor the second one as well so on the second side that red loop is a bit higher up 
So I'm just going to open that up slightly with my notch tool and again, pass it through with my FID. Like so. Okay. So get that all the way through. And I found that this way kind of anchors the strands best, but you can try something else. You know, if you feel the need to, now I'm going to snip off the excess uh, red color on the back here. So I'm going to clip off those excess cords melt it with my lighter press down with my notters tool and I'm going to do the same with the green strands. Okay. So I'm definitely removing these now because it'll be a, uh, you know, really huge mess. If I try to show you how to finish off the bracelet with all these loose strands hanging around. So clip off the excess green like so, and I'm going to melt it and press down on it with the notters tool. So now we can finish off the bracelet. I've got six of these uh, red colored strands left. All right, so I'm going to hold my bracelet like so with the second strand, I'm going to pass it to the front with the uh, fourth strand. I'm going to lay it over top that one. And the third strand is going to go, it's going to sort of bend behind and around the uh, second strand. We're essentially tying a square knot here. So that goes right there. And the, the only ones I'm not working with are the two red strands going straight down the middle. Those are going to be our, you know, diamond knot strands. And now with the first strand, that's going to bend underneath. It's going to go underneath that uh, third strand there and complete that square knot going around the base of the bracelet here. Okay. So we're not done yet. I'm just going to cinch this up slightly to make it a bit neater and easier to see. And then now I'm going to use a FID to make this um, super clear, but I'm just going to attach the FID to this strand. And now um, it's going to pass underneath where the two strands cross over next to it. See here, see how there's a uh, sort of X next to that strand. It just passes to the right and goes underneath that X and it goes um, up and out. Okay. So there's that crossover strand there on the back and the working end goes underneath that X and it comes out straight. Okay. So do this for the, re the remaining strands. So now they're all going to end up, um, you know, pointing outwards and it's going to finish that kind of four strand, uh, diamond knot and do that with our last strand. So now all our strands are going to, all four of those strands will end up, uh, coming out the bottom of this knot. And of course, from here, you need to cinch up that four strand diamond knot, get it nice and tight and get all that excess cord out. And you want it to, um, look nice and neat like so. So now we're going to continue by snipping off those excess cords. Now be very careful doing this because if you're like me and you use the same color for your diamond knot strands at the end and the sort of core strands, uh, you do not want to clip off those uh, two excess strands that are coming straight out because those are going to be our diamond knot strands. So be very careful not to snip the wrong ones. Otherwise you may have to sort of redo it. Okay. So I've got those four strands clipped off and now from here, we're just going to tie a diamond knot. You don't have to tie a diamond knot. You can, uh, you know, try all the, a bunch of other different lanyard knots. I have a uh, multiple lan lanyard knot tutorials on my channel, but I'm just going to tie the diamond knot very simply. So we're going to form our Carex bend like so, and then with the bottom strand, I'm going to pass it around the outside around that, uh, sort of core strand there and through the middle and do the same for the other one, pass it around on the outside, go past the core strand and out through the middle. And if that, uh, demonstration of the diamond knot was too quick, I do have a dedicated one on my channel, of course. So I cinched up my diamond knot and I got it to where I need it to. And now this part, I'm just adding that, uh, you know, fancy little, uh, Cobra knot tab made out of uh, Cobra knots with micro cord right underneath my diamond knot. You don't have to do this part. Um, if your bracelet is sized properly, you know, the tension alone is uh, more than enough to keep it there. But sometimes I like to have a little tab on the, at the end there, instead of just leaving, instead of just cutting off those two excess strands, I like the little tab because it uh, makes it easier to get the diamond knot through the loop, or you could just leave the two tails. It's up to you, but this part is entirely optional, but I did choose to do it. So I just tied some Cobra knots with the micro cord down those two strands 
clipped off the excess and I'm going to clip off the excess uh, 550 and melt that very end. And there we have it. There is the spinal Banes cuff. I absolutely love this one. You know, I've always loved the Banes cuff and, you know, it was one of the sort of original staples on my channel. And uh, we have another iteration of it. This has been the Knot and Loop Spinal Banes Cuff. Huge shout out to Chunk for uh, putting this one together. And of course, the original designer, D-Man McHugh, for this uh, Banes Cuff as well. All right, guys. Um, huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters. You guys are the ones sponsoring all these videos. And uh, if you guys want access to exclusive videos each and every month, uh, for the super low price of 3 bucks a month, you can get access to my Patreon feed as well as uh, my Patreon exclusive videos. Guys, I hope you like this tutorial. I hope you'll try this one out. It, it is a bit more, uh, a little bit more work, but it is worth it. As you can see, the results are quite nice. And if you know you choose the right color combo, this uh, Bane's Cuff can come out amazing. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to check out what I have to offer on the rest of my channel.